Okay, story time. <laughs> so I work at a jewelry store and today a man came in looking for a gift for his wife for their 10th year anniversary. He ended up picking out a piece that said, my beautiful wife. And I said, anything else for you today? And he said, no, that's it for her, but I do want to make another purchase using a separate credit card. And could you possibly create a different account for me? And I said, sure, what are you looking for? And he said, do you have anything that says girlfriend? And I said, yes. And he said, perfect, I'll take it. And do you have anything that says happy one year anniversary to go with it? And I said, Yes. And he said, perfect, I'll take it. So I boxed everything up all nice and I put them in their respected bags. He had me mark a K for Kristen on the bottom of his wife's bag and an L for Laura on the bottom of his girlfriend's bag. I put pretty bows on them. I handed it to him. I said, they're going to love it. Have a nice day. And he said, thank you. And shit, I just remembered that his wife's name is Laura and his girlfriend's name is Kristen. I must have mixed up the bags. Oops. Crazy ass story time. 23 years ago, there was this mother of two children who just recently had a third child. Soon after, the newborn baby was sleeping in the nursery while they were throwing a house party. And unfortunately, during the party, the house caught on fire. Everyone scrambles out of the house and they couldn't get to the baby. And then the cops concluded that the baby had died in the fire. But her other two kids made it out alive. And even though the cops told her that her baby had died, she refused to believe it. Many years later, the mother took her two children to a birthday party. And there was this other woman there with her child. And now the mother looks at that child and is in shock because she looks so much like her other two kids. So she goes up to the little girl and says that she has bubble gum in her hair so that she can steal a few strands of her hair. She took it to a lab and they DNA tested it and that little girl was her child. So it turns out many years ago during that house party, a woman that the mother knew went upstairs, took the baby and started the fire so that the baby would be declared as dead and she could easily get away with kidnapping her. Um, and then she ran from the cops and they can't find her. My friend's mom tried to stab me and my sister. Story time. Yes, honey, you heard that right. She tried to stab us with a knife. So at the time, me and my sister were eight and nine years old and we went to the pool every single day and we eventually made friends with this boy. We're gonna call him Tomato. Then our parents ended up making friends with Tomato's mom. Like they ended up becoming really good friends. And after a couple months, Tomato eventually asked me and my sister to spend the night. Well, our parents surprisingly said yes. This is the one time and the one time only I wish my parents would have said no. Well, anyways, we went to the sleepover. By the way, it was our first sleepover we've ever been to. So we get there around five and we're having a blast. We made forts, we watched DT, we ate popcorn. For our first sleepover, it was going wonderful. However, the whole time we were at this sleepover, his mom was in her room. 11 p.m. comes around and the mom comes out of her room, smelling like alcohol. She was drunk. And she comes out and she starts screaming at us. She thought we were home invaders. Then she goes in the kitchen and grabs a knife. This is why you should never lick envelopes unless you want, well, you'll see. A woman in California who worked at the postal office dealt with tons of envelopes. Now, normally she used a wet sponge to wet them, but she ran out of the water, so she decided to lick a couple envelopes to get them closed. In the process of licking it, she ended up cutting her tongue. She didn't think anything of it until about a week later when she noticed a huge lump forming on the side of her tongue. The doctor took a look at it and said, we need to do surgery and get this thing out of here. The doctor started to incise the lesion out, but then he noticed something crazy. Out from the hole came a live cockroach. It turns out that the envelope had cockroach eggs on it, and when she cut her tongue, the eggs went into her tongue and started forming into live cockroaches. I don't know about you, but I'm never looking envelopes again. So when I was a sophomore in high school, I had this teacher who would only let the students in her class use the restroom one time per semester. Well, one day I raised my hand and I was like, excuse me, I don't remember her name, can I please use the restroom? And she was like, no you can't because you've already used the restroom in my class this semester. Well, excuse me, you can't dictate my bladder. So I'm like all frustrated, and I started secretly texting my mom because I wasn't allowed to use my phone in class. And I was like, Mom, I'm sitting in class right now. My teacher won't let me use the restroom. And she was like, I'll take care of it for you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> so like five minutes goes by, and all of a sudden, my teacher's phone starts ringing. And she walks up to it and answers it, and she's like, hello? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And then she walks up to me like so angry and she like slams the pass on my desk and she was like, since you have to go that bad. And I was like, yeah, I really do, thanks. And I got up and left. I didn't even have to go to the bathroom. It was just the principle of it. I just roamed the halls. <laughs> when I was like five years old, I almost got kidnapped, story time. So back in the day, it used to be safe for kids to play out on the street, or so I thought. 
You know when you're a little kid, you really don't listen to your parents? Well, anyways, what happened was that my mom was cooking. And I was like, mommy, please, 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 please. Let me play outside with my new scooter. My mom was always very protective, so she would not let us out of her sight. She's like, I'm going to go outside for two minutes with you. And then we're going to come right back inside. I was like, yay. So I'm just over here playing outside. And my mom was like, se me queman las tortillas, se me queman las tortillas. For those who don't know, that means she was burning tortillas. She's like, sit on the steps here in the driveway. You know me being a dumb little child. I was like, who? Let me see how fast I can go. Wee! Here I go with my scooter. I'm still in the driveway. This man and this woman are walking across the street. Then that creepy man was like, Hey, come here. That woman was like, I just want to see your scooter. I dropped that scooter and I said, Skirt! They started running after me up my driveway. Whenever somebody asks me how I got so good at makeup, I just tell them about the time that my mom put me in solitary confinement for two and a half months with no phone, radio, TV, computer, nothing like that. Um, I couldn't even eat dinner with my family. They put cameras outside my room so that I couldn't leave without them knowing. I had to call on the intercom to ask to use the bathroom. But my mom gave me a curling iron, a straightener, and a crap ton of makeup to keep myself busy. And then she told everybody she knew that I tried to kill myself. And that's why she had to put me in solitary confinement. So when I went back to school that fall, I had a lot of um, explaining to do to my friends about why I had been missing for the last two and a half months with no contact, but at least I came out kinda hot. This is why you should always trust your gut. In the 1970s, a young couple decided to go for a late night hike in the woods. A couple minutes into their walk and the man remembers thinking something's not right. He tells his girlfriend, but they just decide to ignore it and keep going, until he steps on something that felt really soft, like it was alive. Before he has a chance to see what he stepped on, they hear all this rustling in the bushes next to them, and they bolt. Years later, that couple turns on the TV, and a death row inmate who's about to be executed is being interviewed. And they ask him, was there ever a time that you were almost caught red-handed? He responded, yes, one time. I was in the woods and a couple walked through and the man actually stepped on the body of a girl I had just killed. I was hiding in the bushes just a few feet away. They didn't see me. That couple had run into one of the worst serial killers of all time, Ted Bundy. This is why you should be careful what you put in the mail. In 2015, a man was asked by his neighbor to collect his mail while he was gone for a few weeks. A few days later, a large package arrives on his neighbor's front porch. The man can barely lift it, but gets over to his garage where he accidentally drops it and hears something break inside. Hoping his neighbor would think the damage occurred en route, he closes his squeaky garage door and forgets about it. But over the next couple of days, whatever was in that package started to smell so bad that he decides to open it up. Inside were two very important finds, his neighbor, who was dead, and a camera that was still recording. The police bring the man in for questioning and show him what was on the camera inside the box. It starts with his neighbor talking to the camera about how excited he is to mail himself home for his YouTube channel. Then, police fast forward to the very end where they see that the neighbor is now sleeping in the box, and then suddenly gets dropped and you hear a crack, and that's his neck breaking. And then you hear a squeaky garage door close. I need to process this. So I was in the grocery store, minding my own business, as one should, and I kept getting stares, which I understand why, because look at all this. No, I'm kidding. It's apparently because my jean shorts are too short. It may be uncomfortable. But at last, I'm a strong gal, I just keep a strolling. And I noticed that there's this older man who keeps a walking behind me. And I'm thinking, what's good, Bubba? Well, he approaches me and he says this. Yes, this is true, buckle up. Ma'am, you're not wearing a whole lot of clothing. You're gonna make men stumble. And I said, sir, are you saying you're falling head over heels in love with me? <laughs> he didn't think that was funny. He said, when girls like you wear clothing like that, it's very difficult for boys and men like me to control my thoughts and actions. <laughs> I said, sir, if you and others can't control your thoughts and actions, you shouldn't be leaving the house because you're a predator. One day my cousin made a tinder and we were having a family barbecue so he came over he was like oh my god sam like this really hot girl just like matched with me and then he shows me and then i see the profile and it's literally pictures of madison beer but the name on the profile was like kalani i was like bro i don't know who you think you're fucking texting but it's not madison beer you're probably you're texting someone's fucking auntie right now whole ass auntie he's like guess we're about to find out i was like <laughs> no what the f no He's like, yeah, I just gave her the Addy. She's about to pull up. Like, we're going to meet. Like, it's all cool, Sam. Like, trust me. Trust me. 
trust me, he said. Okay. I trusted him. So I see a car pull up, and he's like, oh my god, I think it's her. I was like, oh shit, what if I do meet Madison Beer? Oh my the door freaking opens. And this old lady pops up. I look at my cousin, and I'm like, go! Go hug her!